Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got a short little knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Kubi KU-235 or Kubi Monster Dog Premium. This is actually a titanium and M390 knife from Kubi. And, you know, truthfully, I have reviewed this base model, um, the uh, the budget version of this, which I believe is still available. I'll link this knife right down below so you can check it out and the, um, the budget version of this knife. Uh, they are periodically available, not always. Um, but uh, really, the most amazing thing about this knife is the price. Uh, these pop up right around $160 um, when they do come back in stock. And that's pretty impressive, uh, but I wanted to give my thoughts on the Titanium Frame Lock model, even if it's kind of a short video. Uh, thanks so much to actually Going Gear, I believe provided this knife uh, through the EDC Gear Club box thing. Um, so thank you very much. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of uh, this knife. Overall length is coming in at about seven inches. Blade length is three inches and cutting edge is about 2.85. Let's go ahead and do just a few size comparisons today up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. So you can see here it's really, its presence is mostly in height. Um, it's otherwise a pretty short knife. How about up against like the Civivi Elementum? How about up against the CGRB Pyrite? There we go. And I don't know, should we do one more? How about up against the bug out? And we'll go ahead and do the Spider Co. Para 3 just to get a good idea. Okay, how's the action on this knife? I actually really like the action and it's the same thing that I said in the um, liner lock version. It's because these thumb wagon wheels are just gigantic. Uh, it's actually really easy to get a hold of them. They are definitely in the cutting path, but when it comes to deployment, there's really quite a bit to grab onto. They're not sharp or anything like that. It's just a lot of surface area and it's textured. Um, it looks a little bit weird. This is gonna be one of those knives that's either aesthetically pleasing or the ugliest thing that anybody's ever seen, right? I mean, that's you could say that about any knife. But um, it's gonna be eye of the beholder. Uh, for sure. But yeah, uh, actually thumb flicking it or just wheeling it out or reverse flicking it. It's all actually really, really easy to manipulate. And the action itself actually feels really, really good without any, you know, weird double clutch situation or anything like that. So that's nice. Let's go ahead and do carry profile thickness up against the Spyderco Pair 3. It's maybe slightly thicker, but it's because it's contoured, which is also a really impressive thing. I like that. Length and height up against the PM2 and the Para 3. Where is the PM2? There it is. So this guy's going to carry kind of fat and chunky. It's definitely um, not quite as long as the Para 3, but it's nearly as tall. Um, not quite as, as long as the PM2, but uh, again, about the same uh, height. This titanium version is just going to be, you know, a, a decent amount heavier. Not, not incredibly heavy. Uh, if you take a look at the inside here, you can see that it has been milled out for weight reduction. So that's nice. The actual weight of this guy is coming in at, let's get it zeroed out. Is it pounds? We don't want pounds. <laughs> Almost ounces. There we go. 4.97 ounces, which is reasonably heavy for a knife of this size. I mean, it's not like, oh my gosh, I can't carry it, right? I mean, your cell phone weighs with that otter box you've got on it. Yeah, your, your cell phone has got to be somewhere right around. I would weigh my cell phone, but it's being used to record this video. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you, you can still carry it. But it's going to be larger and heavier and a little bit taller, I think, than a lot of knives in this general size range. So just be aware of it. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I will get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. We're starting off here with a T8, and I believe that's the case with all of the hardware. The pivot, the lock bar inserts, the body screws, and even the pocket clip screw are all T8, which is really nice. Minimal hardware, uh, very easy to take apart. That's fantastic. Let's go ahead and measure the blade stock thickness here. Um, I'm, I'm going to guess that's like 140, maybe 150. Oops. Okay, wow, it's even thicker than that. Let's let's make sure that that's accurate. 150, 
yeah, it's probably 155,000. So we're in like old school ZT territory here, approaching like standard hinderer territory. Fairly thick blade. All right, moving on here. It really is largely the same. And I got to be honest, I can't remember if the standard version of this had a similar clip. Or it was just steel. This has a milled clip and a milled backspacer, which, I mean, really... It, like the aesthetic is whatever you're going to make of it, right? Like you, you know, some people get really lost in the idea that if if they don't like how it looks, then it's not worth the money to anybody else, which is a very stupid, a very like caveman thing to think. <laughs> um, no, just because you find it uh, attractive or unattractive doesn't mean that everybody else should find it attractive or unattractive. It's just whatever you think of it, right? It has no bearing. Your opinions on the aesthetics have absolutely no bearing on the universal value of it. Um, but, you know, it, I guess if it's hard to wrap your brain around that, then good luck. Uh, but uh, as far as, you know, things we can point to as, you know, being items or elements of value considering the price point, titanium, M390, contoured titanium, uh, it's been flamed. Not, you know, it's not a lot of work involved with that, but it looks nice, right? The blue hardware, the fully milled clip and milled backspacer, right? And on top of that, Kubi does a really, really good job uh, executing these materials. That's all pretty amazing. You know, I mean, some of the most competitive companies, it's not like Kubi's a new company. They just are still periodically putting out amazing stuff. Now, here's the thing. The thing that bothers me is, is that they also put out stuff that is exactly the same thing and then they're just like well this one costs 40 dollars more i'm like well, but why right um why why can't kubi do all of their stuff like in this 160 to 180 territory and i know a lot of you are like be fair dude like they most of their stuff is you right? you're pick, you're cherry picking all right fine you got me but it'd be nice to see like that consistency and then if you do go above that price point then there better be something really fantastic right but this is a very competitive price point you are simply not going to see knives that are made out of the same materials the same way uh coming from the united states you're just not right uh, i think people find it a lot safer a lot easier for uh, it's it's inside their simple little bubble to just be like, well, American knives that are really, really expensive are just massively overpriced and they're just ripping our faces off and it's the same thing with Chinese. No, it's not. There's all of the elements that you have to consider. You can't be lazy with it. You, I mean, it's it's really, really easy and really lazy to fall back on that conclusion, right? That just means I did no research and I can't be bothered. Um, as far as the actual competition and pricing, right, you also do have to allow... I mean, even if you don't like it, right, we have to <laughs> consider that these companies actually have to have a profit margin so that they can continue to function, right? They have to make money off it. They're not charities, right? All of that considered, right, um, $160, which is actually on the high side of what I've seen this go for. I've seen it go as low for as low as $152. Uh, and considering what Chinese knives in this caliber, executing materials like this in this fashion, right, the actual competition zone, that price is really amazing. Um, it really just comes down at that point to aesthetic taste, right? Um, and, you know, preferences as far as country of origin. There's a lot of people right now getting ready to type me up a paragraph about how they don't want to buy Chinese knives and only want to support American companies. You don't have to type me up a paragraph. You can just do that. That's fine. You don't have to tell everybody about it. That doesn't actually do anything. Doing that does something about it. So you have to kind of just do what you're going to do. That's fine. Everybody has their own personal sense of value. But as far as this versus the general competition, it's really impressive. It's also a really comfortable and functional knife. I mean, it kind of looks like somebody ran over a toucan with a tank. But, you know, that shape works. There's a little bit of a ramp here, Laura, a little bit of a buzz cut. I think I called this a toucan with a buzz cut or a toucan with a military cut, right? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's the, 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 uh, the, where you put your thumb in relationship to where you put your index finger, right? This 
they complement each other. It's really nice. The blade is also short enough to get your index finger up here and do some draw cuts. And it tapers down to a reasonably, I'd say a medium thickness edge. I mean, it's a good utilitarian blade shape with plenty of strength, which is good because M390 is not a tough composition. People get confused about that. I heard M390 was the best steel out there. Eh, he, they didn't give you all the info, right? You heard that from a person who is generalizing it and just really, really likes the ratio of corrosion resistance to uh, edge retention, which is what people like about M390. That or they just hear it's the best and they just keep repeating it. What M390 lacks is toughness. It also definitely is not easy to sharpen unless it is severely under heat treated, right? Um, so M390 is a good composition, but it is not the best, and that does not mean that it is indestructible. In fact, it's quite weak. It's quite prone to chipping when heat treated properly. I'm going to guess that Kubi is heat treating this stuff to the industry standard of 59 to 61. Should it be a bit higher? Yes, but it also makes it a little bit more brittle, right? So you kind of have to do with that information what you will. Um, but um, yeah, I, I find this to be a good utilitarian size, a good utilitarian shape. Um, I just, uh, I don't have a problem with it. I think it's really, really nice. I think the overall aesthetic is really nice. They have a plain version of this. This is like a, a, f a flamed version. Also, this is not a new model. It's actually been around for a while. Um, but uh, the plain version is just kind of like standard tie and it, it also looks really good. I don't think that there are any other versions of it but maybe there are, I, I just haven't seen any. There's a little lanyard slot back here in the middle of the backspacer and that's a nice place uh, to put that. So I don't have a problem with that. The pocket clip is very, very simple, but again, it is milled and not stamped. Um, the edges are nicely chamfered down. Um, there's a little ramp underneath here, which makes it really easy to go in and out of the pocket. There's a steel lock bar insert that doubles as the over travel stop, so that's nice. There's a uh, stop pin located in its traditional spot flat area behind the uh, tang of the blade, uh, so no shouldering or anything like that. Runs on bearings, no blade play up, down, left, or right, no lock stick, no uh, double clutch, no pivot lash. Consistent enough in here. It's not like glassy buttery, but it, it's fine and it'll wear in over time. And a nice detent about what you'd want to be thumb flicking this thing out. Much like the uh, budget monster dog, I, I just like it. I mean, it's a goofy, weird, stumpy, little toucan looking knife. But it works, right? And the price is really, really good. I, I, uh, I, you know, this is evidence that Kubi can do this. And I mean, honestly, if Kubi can do it, a bunch of other companies can, you know, can work in this price point. Do they make as much money? No. Do they, you know, if, if, if every single company right now in this moment dropped down and they took every knife that they've made that is uh, with, made with similar materials, similar quality, right, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they dropped it down to this general 160 to 180 dollar price territory versus the 240, 250 up to 300 that they've been charging for the knives. Would that be better for us? Yes. Um, but then they wouldn't be able to pump nearly as much money into other projects and things like that. So there's downside to it. I still think this knife is proof that a lot of things are just dramatically overpriced, especially when it comes to Chinese production knives. Um, and you know, it's like, it, like the, the big long comment that a lot of you are going to type me up earlier, right? I agree with you. There's another reason you don't have to leave. You can, but I, I already agree with you. But this knife is definitely evidence of that. Um, but a, as it sits, I don't want to use this review as like a grandstanding thing or anything like that. But as it sits, this is a good knife and I generally recommend it. I think it's nice. Uh, it's nice to finally get an opportunity to look at the premium one because I, I've known that it exists for a long time. Again, I will try and link this knife down below, but it, not, it might not be there. It just depends on when you're watching this video. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.